Hey, what's going on everybody? Before we begin today's video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to today's sponsors at ECG Designs 13. They are your one-stop shop for all of your clothes and accessories from shoes, shirts, uh, jackets and hats, all the way down to books and watches and blankets, even all the way down to pins. Uh, as you can see right now, I am actually sporting one of their baseball tees, which is a, a, a stitched up smiley face, which believe it or not, is supposed to be a, um, a background story to how the creator used to work at Walmart. And it just goes way, way deeper into that. Um, I would definitely say it is absolutely worth looking into and I would definitely say it's worth following all of their social media and getting a hold of them so that way they themselves can personally tell you all about the different designs that they have they have almost a thousand different products that are on their site right now so many different kinds of designs that I guarantee it, it will range from anything from like melting pizza to broken clocks to digital foxes and as you see stitched up smiley faces guys it gets weird but it also gets super freaking cool over at the site so i would definitely say go check them out over at ecgdesigns13.myshopify.com and go get you some new gear today hey hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to the monday review matinee with me your host plugs bunny one half of the rabbit hole sounds i hope everybody's having a fantastic monday and today we are going to be reviewing something that i've been wanting to review for a while now so please believe if i'm excited i know you guys are going to be just as excited because we have something that's better than the miller's video that came out a couple of weeks ago today we are focusing on the 1994 classic comedy known as The Mask, starring Jim Carrey and Miss Cameron Diaz. Before we get into today's video, take a listen to today's song of the day. This is gonna be pretty weird to start the video on because it's gonna start in a way where nobody would really think to believe or even think that these these things would be correlated into the same movie. But unless you've seen it, it's gonna be weird. But if you have seen it, then you know where we're about to um, uh, come from. So let's go on ahead and get into this. Leif Erikson travels with his crew to banish Loki's cursed mask to the new world where it's been buried for centuries until unearthed in today's time. Charlie and Stanley. Charlie is played by Richard Jenny and Stanley is played by Jim Carrey. Charlie and Stanley work at a bank where Tina, played by Cameron Diaz, comes in and leaves the men infatuated by her looks, but she only approaches Stanley to do work or work. <laughs> Tina chooses Stanley for help so she can survey the bank vault with her spy camera that's in her purse. She does this to help out her criminal boyfriend, Dorian, and his heist pals. Stanley is a pretty average guy with down bad luck once his car gets dismantled by mechanics, they're pretty bad at it, who sets him up with a loner car when a ways down the timeline, the car breaks down on him on a bridge. When he finds the mask floating in the water while looking over the bridge, mistaking it for a man dead in the water. After getting home to greet his dog Milo and watch some old cartoons, he gets tempted to put on the mask to see why Max feels scared, giving us one of the greatest scenes in a Jim Carrey movie, if not any movie period. There's a lot of times where I say that these moments are going to be better than the one before, but there's so, there's so many amazing scenes in this movie that deal with Jim Carrey wearing that mask so if this is not the best scene then the next scene will be the best scene if the next scene
is not the best, then the one after that will be the best. Anything that has to do with Jim Carrey being covered in a green face doesn't matter. It's fantastic. After getting into some trouble with the local street gang, he lured them to a poorly lit alley where he blows them balloon animals but turns one of the balloons into a Tommy gun, blamming at the gang, making them run for their lives. After dealing with a doctor who called him crazy for wanting info on the mask, then being turned away, being booted from the nightclub with Charlie and his friends, and feeling embarrassed in front of Tina, and almost having a wet dream about it by the way, he wakes up and realizes that he wants to appear as cool and more confident by putting the mask on and gives us a scene that as young boys, let's call us spade a spade, uh, we all loved and adored because Cameron Diaz gave us a type of Marilyn Monroe slash Jessica Rabbit vibe that still holds fresh in our minds to this day. Like, I don't care what anyone says. If you were a boy or if you were just a, a, a fluid girl, Cameron Diaz was your biggest crush in this movie. Like, there was just something about her, man. Like, it, it was almost like looking at, like, Barbie come to life, but she had just... I don't know. I cannot explain it myself. All I know is that I just, I couldn't, I could not control myself. I should probably keep in mind that the mask felt his pockets were pretty empty and he robbed the bank that Dorian's crew was trying to hit following in a blam out with the cops. So before they make it to uh, the club where he starts doing all this crazy dancing and you see him turning into a cartoon character just all in the name of uh, Tina just looking all kinds of good and doing her own thing. He hit the bank to get some money Then he heads out there and then he just starts doing his thing after Tina finishes singing and the mask is finished dancing with her being a showstopper Dorian and his people begin attacking the mask due to the bank robbery and Tina finding the mask to be more interesting But his crew gets arrested in the nick of time Stanley later gets approached from all sides. One side is having the cops get suspicious about him since the bank got robbed and he's an employee from there. But there's a clue in the form of his shot off tie from the nightclub, yet the trail goes cold for a quick moment. The other side is about the mechanic that screwed Stanley over and a reporter named Peggy wants info on suspicious activity from the garage. Peggy is played by Amy Yasbeck. A very interesting, very pretty woman, very pretty. The stress for Dorian is now on after his boss casts a shadow on his life and forces his hand, putting a bag on whoever can find the mask and deliver them to Dorian. Stressed and paranoid about what might or might not have happened the night before, Stanley goes to work and confronts his boss about how poorly he's running the bank since his boss feels like he's on a higher plane of existence, just feeling like his dick is bigger than everyone else's. If that wasn't bad enough, he gets approached by Tina saying that she's wanting to skip town but not without wanting to spend a little time with the mask since she assumes that he and Stanley know each other. After Tina meets him and some Pepe Le Pew interactions goes on, the cops ambush the mask and arrest then search him but they get caught in their own restraints as the mask flees the scene but not before the full force of the law catches up to him leading to possibly uh, guys this this may have to be like the best part of the movie i do not care it's the cuban pete song nothing gets any better than that he gets away turning back to stanley and running into peggy but she sets him up to get caught by dorian and his crew for a quick pay doing so gives dorian a chance to try the mask on and turning into an evil version possibly the true version, the, the, the real perfect form of him, uh, the evil version of the mask. Stanley's apartment gets raided for the cash, allowing Milo to run now and after the car holding Stanley as a hostage because now they found their way to his place and they're like, well, we need the money that you took from us. Sucks to suck, sucks to be you. One of Dorian's men drops Stanley off at the police department with a decoy mask in his pocket, giving the cops a chance to book him once and for all. After being warned by Tina about Dorian going to do something horrible at the club, she gets cornered by his crew and held hostage, then forced to go to the club with him in his new evil persona. Stanley hears her screams and gets help from Milo who managed to steal the keys and break him out. He's able to run up the wall and go uh, through the bar window. He's able to just take the keys from the sleeping cop. Amazing. Dorian and his goons make it to the club where the mob boss is and starts a huge blam out, resulting in the boss losing his life, but then Dorian messes up by taking the mask off to kiss Tina who sets him up to fail. She says basically, the only way that 
I will do whatever you want is if you give me a kiss or how are you going to put an attempt on my life and not give me like a little goodbye kiss? He's like, you know what, you're right. His people were like, dude, there's not a lot of time. He's like, there's always time for just one kiss. And then he winds up kicking the mask out of his hand and it goes flying in the air where Milo grabs it and the following ensues. Milo gets the mask, puts it on, and goes Looney Tunes on the crew while Stanley does the same without the mask for the first time in the movie. I mean, he's going all Steve Rogers in there, the kid that will just jump onto a damn grenade who would risk his life for his loves and all that. Yeah, he goes in without any superpowers and does a pretty good job subduing of the criminals. But after he takes the mask from Milo, he finishes them all off while wearing it. A Clint Eastwood reference is used in there and it's just, it's neat. He saves a bomb strapped Tina by eating the bomb and plants the blame all on Dorian since the attacks on the club happened while Stanley was detained. As far as they know, everything that was going on was while Stanley was still detained and all this crap was going on, but even the cop knew, the main cop that had arrested him knew that the mask wasn't Stanley because how can you be in two places at one time? Stanley and Tina share a kiss after throwing the mask back into the water, leaving Charlie to jump in after it, but loses his chance once Milo jumps in too and gets it before him. There's a lot of filler that I have not included into this review just because if I did, then I would totally be giving away every single aspect of the movie and I want everyone to go and watch the movie on their own so that way they can get the better experience of it. I just kind of wanted to give like a little bit of uh, the highlights of the the more important parts of the stories. Even the ones that was pretty shortened um, play a very significant role in this movie to me. So yeah, it's important that, that we skim down some scenes so that way it can it can be syndicated. But I want you guys who have not seen it to go on ahead and watch it on your own time. Those who have seen it before to go on ahead and go watch it just for the sake of nostalgia. Because every time I watch this, I'm reminded why this is possibly one of Jim Carrey's greatest movies of all time. If not, at least just number one in front of both of the other uh, Ace Ventura movies. And I'll even say his role in Batman Forever. Uh, the movie with uh, Val Kilmer was 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 a pretty good role, even having Tommy Lee Jones being a um, a Harvey Dent. So it was pretty cool to to uh, to watch this again and realize like <laughs> this movie still holds up, fantastic. Like I want to say about almost almost twenty years later, almost twenty years later it holds up fantastically. I'm sorry, uh, ninety four, two thousand four, two thousand fourteen wow almost 30 years later guys that's crazy almost 30 years later and this movie still has just just fantastic quality the jokes they hit um there's there could be a, a few things where people are like oh you're you're trying to sell an image when it comes to like sexuality and all that crap it was a different time and it's not a thing where it's like you know but it is what it is all I can say is is that um, this this movie is definitely something important that can help tap into someone's true weird nature, weird side, but their free side. All this movie, I to me, I feel like this movie is like a booster with confidence. But once you realize your own true worth and you can understand just what kind of person you are and what you can deliver to the world it all starts with you it all starts with how you move it all progresses with your uh optimistic view on life like there's always going to be things that's going to try to hold you back it's going to try to hold you down it's going to try to keep you from doing your best from being your best stay true to yourself because no matter what there's there's not enough boosters in the world that can help you feel more confident than you already than than what you should because don't get me wrong there are but those boosters can destroy lives and just like in this movie the mask could have destroyed uh a few lives until they realize that this is basically like a drug that no one should be taking because no one should have this much power and it's not about having power at the end of the day, it's about having confidence. So as long as you're confident in yourself, you can absolutely do 
anything you put your mind to. So those are my final thoughts. Um, I still feel like the movie it, uh, holds up very, very well in 2023. And I'm going to go on ahead and say that this movie has about like a good 8.5 or a 9 out of 10 in my eyes. It is a classic. Thank you everybody so much who tuned in today to watch today's review. I would love to know in the comments below what video we should do at some point in the future. Like give us all the recommendations. We are always willing to uh, expand our mental and try to get something um, covered. <laughs> try to get every, try to get anything as possibly covered to make you guys as possibly happy as possible how many times can i say possible in a sentence <laughs> i just wanted to uh to remind you guys really quickly that i'm still working on my avengers album but i've decided that i'm going to split the album into um a two-part ep that will eventually see a album release but it will be in a later time i'm hoping to get the first part of the um ep out at some point in march the next part will be in april and then hopefully in may i can compile them together and put out the album so um keep your eyes open for march we're gonna have some good stuff in store with that being said ladies and gentlemen my name is plugs bunny one half of the rival hole sounds this has been another movie review matinee and i hope to see you guys in the next movie thank you so much Okay.